The statement of comprehensive income, this is a fourth financial statement. It's not one of the main financial statements, but we do need to know what it is and what it is showing. U.S. GAAP requires that a company show its comprehensive income. And this is potentially a little bit different than the net income for the company. Comprehensive income includes all of the transactions that the company entered into during the period, except for transactions that are made with the owners of the company. So what we're talking about, these transactions with the owners of the company, the sale of shares, the payment of dividends, okay, those transactions with the owners are not part of comprehensive income, but everything else that the company did is part of comprehensive income. Now, what they've done with the standard is this. They have said that there's a handful of transactions, and we'll look at the list a little bit later, but there's this handful of transactions, the effect of which we're not going to put on the income statement. Okay? The effect of these is not going to go on the income statement. It's going to be pulled out of the income statement, and these are what are called other comprehensive income items. So, comprehensive income includes everything on the income statement plus some items that do not appear on the income statement because that is what the standard requires. This isn't a decision that the company makes. Oh, we're not going to put out that on the income statement. We're going to put it over here. The company doesn't get to make that decision. That is what the standard requires. These items are not going to be reported on the income statement. They are going to be part of other comprehensive income, and they are going to show up on the statement of comprehensive income. So the statement of comprehensive income includes everything except transactions with the owners. So what we need to look at next is the form of the statement of comprehensive income. The statement of comprehensive income can be presented in two ways. It can be presented either as a single statement with the income statement, in which case we have the income statement, it comes down to net income, and then it just keeps going and comes up with comprehensive income. So a single statement with the income statement or as two separate but consecutive statements, in which case we're just kind of drawing a line, we're breaking a little bit between net income and then the statement of comprehensive income. Okay? So it's either one single statement or it is going to be two separate statements. If it's a single statement, the single statement needs to be presented in two sections, net income and other comprehensive income. What it needs to do is it needs to present total net income along with the components that make up net income, and then it needs to present a total amount for the other comprehensive income along with the components that make it up. So we have the income statement, and then we have these other comprehensive income items as well. If it is two consecutive statements, okay, it's presents the total net income and the components of net income in the statement of net income, and then it has total other comprehensive income and the components that make that up immediately after the statement of net income. The statement of comprehensive income begins with net income. Now, I understand if you're sitting there thinking, what's the difference between these two? There's not a lot. The difference is whether or not we're kind of sticking a heading in the middle. There's the statement of net income, then net income. Statement of comprehensive income, that starts with net income. That's two consecutive statements. Or if it's just one big long statement, that's the statement of, of comprehensive income that has net income in the middle of it, but it's not really highlighted by breaking it into two statements. Now, whether we do one or two statements, the issue that we have is presenting the tax effects. These other comprehensive income items can either be presented net of tax or before tax with the effect of tax shown. Okay? Either net of tax or before tax, but then the, the effect of taxes for those other comprehensive income items shown is the tax effect of other comprehensive income. So we have to separate out the tax effect for these other comprehensive income items, whether it's done individually or in total, the tax effects need to be shown separately. Now, how this is shown on the balance sheet. Essentially, what's happening in this is the company's going to have a transaction, and instead of making an entry to a gain or loss account, 
they're going to make an entry to an equity account. Okay? This other comprehensive income item on, in the equity section of the balance sheet. Now, if we think about it, it's really not that different. Because if the company makes a gain or loss entry, that gain or loss is going to get closed to retained earnings at the end of the period. Here, with these items which we're going to look at that are other comprehensive items, what they're doing is they're not making the journal entry to gain or loss. They're making a journal entry to this account called other comprehensive income, which is in the equity section of the balance sheet. So it's just reported separately within the equity section. It's not a gain or a loss. It doesn't go through the income statement. But it still ends up in the equity section of the balance sheet, these other comprehensive income items. Now, we've talked about it and understand what it is in this statement. What are these other comprehensive income items? Now, we're going to go through a list here. We really don't need to know how to calculate them. This is not a complete list, but these are the ones that are kind of more common. And so these are the items that are going to generate a gain or a loss. But instead of that gain or loss going as a gain or loss to the income statement, these are going to go to the statement of other comprehensive income as this item, not as a gain or loss. It still ends up in the equity section on the balance sheet, but it's not going to end up as part of retained earnings. It's going to end up as other comprehensive income. So these items, foreign currency translation adjustments. Okay, when we have to adjust foreign currency financial statements, there may be a translation adjustment. That translation adjustment goes to other comprehensive income. The unrealized holding gains and losses on available for sale securities. Subsequent decreases or increases in the fair value of available for sale securities previously written down. Okay, these are the items that the standards have said go to other comprehensive income. There's more. The effective portion, the effective portion, of gains and losses on derivative instruments that are designated as cash flow hedges. And also the effective portion of gains and losses on foreign currency transactions that are designated as economic hedges of a net investment in a foreign entity. Okay, the key word here, we don't need to go into the detail, but it's the effective portion. The ineffective portion is going to go to the income statement. The effective portion is going to go to other comprehensive income. Also, Gains or losses associated with pension or other post-retirement benefits. Prior service costs or credits associated with pensions or other post-retirement service benefits. Transition assets or obligations associated with pensions or other post-retirement benefits. What they're doing is they're taking some of these potentially very large gains or losses connected to a pension plan. And they're saying, don't put it on the income statement. We're going to put it on other comprehensive income, and then we'll slowly release it to income. Okay? But these items are going to be part of other comprehensive income. Now, as I said, that's not a complete list. Those are just some of the more common ones and examples of these items that are not. The gain or loss is not on the income statement. It goes into this statement of comprehensive income as other comprehensive income. Now, if we looked at these and we looked at this whole list, it's very possible that a company doesn't have any of these other comprehensive income items. If they don't, then they don't have to prepare this statement of other comprehensive income. Their net income is their comprehensive income. Okay. So the statement of comprehensive income, this is the income statement, or well, it's a this comprehensive income statement shows the effect of all of the transactions of the company, except for transactions with the owners. What the standard has done is it's taken this handful of transactions and said the what is essentially the gain or loss from these specific transactions is not going to go on the income statement as a gain or a loss. It's going to go in this other comprehensive income section, and it's also going to end up in the balance sheet, but not as part of retained earnings. It's going to be this other comprehensive income item in the equity section of the balance sheet. So the statement of comprehensive income, all transactions except for the transactions with the owners of the company. So just taking some of these items and taking them off the income statement and putting it on to this statement of other comprehensive income.